All right, today I've gathered together some fun stuff. And we're going to use the little square gel plates. We're going to use some dilutions paint, a brayer, and make some fun squares. So today we're going to play a little bit with some of the little square gel plates. And I made these clear acrylic, I made them, my husband made these clear acrylic blocks for me which I love. Now, one thing about this is I, <laughs> I put it down and I kind of pulled it a little bit and it made it not square anymore. Not even was it not square on the thing, um, but it wasn't square, like a square shape anymore. So make sure when you put them down, you have a square shape. We're gonna use these paints because they seem like they will go really well with kind of what I'm doing. We're going to work on, um, for some of them, just on a sheet to make some squares. And then for some of them on my background, so I can get some of my art journaling done. Um, okay, so let's get a... Doo -doo -doo. Oh, here we go. Just had my finger on it. So we need this to get the paint out. You can... She um, sells these now in squirty bottles, but I got the, I have in my stash some of the older ones. Let's clean up a wee bit. Okay, so we're gonna start. I have nine ways to use the mini square gel plate. So we're gonna start with, and I have two of them because it takes a long time for things to dry in Florida. Okay, here we go. All right, so you need a brayer and you need a gel plate. These are super cool because they come in a set with circles. I'm gonna do a video about circles. In circles, squares, and triangles, and they're like 13 bucks. You can, everybody can afford them or ask for your birthday. Okay, so we're gonna start with, um, let's start with this dark paint. Okay. And I gotta move my papers. Okay. And I think, I think, doo, 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 oh, my mini brayer must be getting cleaned. Okay, so we're gonna just get a little bit of paint. And you need very little paint to do this, okay? Don't go heavy on the paint. And we're just gonna brayer this out. Roll, roll, roll. Okay, so, and you would think this would be the same as doing um, doing it on just a piece of paper if you took a brayer, but this is really cool because it allows you to get like dimension and depth and things like that. So now what we're gonna do, so that's number one. Number two, we're gonna put a little bit more of this on. This is why I like the, uh, having the acrylic blocks. We're gonna do this and this cute red color. We're gonna get this. And we're gonna put a little bit of red color on, right? And then we're gonna blend them. Oh, we may need a little bit more of the pink. Ooh, that dark color is very dark. Oh, there we go. All right, so two colors blended. I got a lot of paint on here. So we're going to get something to rub our paint off on. Oh, we'll just get another art journal page started. So I never waste paint. Well, I waste paint all the time, but I try not to waste paint. So that is what it looks like brayered on just my side page. And now we're gonna make a square of this. And this is gonna be really pretty because you're gonna see all different colors. See, now you've got kind of a blended look. You could even blend that even more but that's another way to make two different colors, okay? 
Now we're gonna do, oh, this one's fun. Now we're gonna do, let's do a different color. Let's do this, and I'm gonna have to start wiping this off because that, that dark color is very dark. All right, let's wash off our brayer again. Choo, choo, choo. There we go. All right, so this time we're gonna use green, and maybe, let's do green, all right. And maybe a little bit of blue. Because remember that one background page I'm using? We want a little bit of blue. Okay. Boop. All right. And these, these gel plates are brand new. So they're gonna be a little bit funky until I get them going. Um, you should see my old ones. They're really, really funky. Okay, I want it to be more blue than green. So we'll get a little bit more blue on here. And you can move that blue around to different areas and then just roll it out. Okay, so we got that. Now we're gonna use the big comb. So this, I got these at the dollar store. I have a dollar store video. But I love this comb, because watch, we can make squares. Come right here. And so I will be able to use this square. Look how cute that is. And the difference with the gel plate and just putting paint on is that you're gonna get all these different fun gradients and we got a little bit of that old pink in there. It's just way less plain. So we're gonna do this again, since we got this stuff out already. We're gonna put a little bit more blue on here. We're gonna grab a little bit of green. We're gonna try to get the green out of my blue. <laughs> I know. All right, so. Now we have a lot of paint. So you don't want to have a ton of paint on your gel plate. Okay. Now we're going to use, this is a beard comb. It's for men to use on their beards. And this will give us little skinny lines for our checks. All right, let's get another spot. So that's number three, see how cute that is? I love that. All right, so little paint management here. Let's dig this purple out of our pink. All right. That's good enough. You won't even see it in there. Okay, so our next one is background pattern, same color. So we'll do that over here. I don't like the dark as much. I think that's mostly pink. So let's see if this stays really light. We gotta get the paint, the green paint off our brayer. It's sometimes nice to have two brayers, which I have. So I may switch to that. Okay, so we have patterns. So if you want to just make um, cheap patterns, I got this at the dollar store. And I feel like my lids are in my way. So let's move our lids over here. Let's get a little bit more room for our poles. Okay. And on bigger plates, you have to like really press it, but on little plates, you don't have to. Oh, look, we got some over there, that's cute. All right, so see you make a pattern in it. So let's now do the same thing. Do we wanna get another little color in there? 
agree. I think we should. We're going to go with orange because I don't have enough paint lids open yet. I actually like orange and blue very nicely together because they are complementary colors. But we're going to go orange and pink, which are cute colors together. We're going to get a little bit of orange in here. That's going to go right down the middle of that. We're just going to kind of blend that. Okay. And we're doing, oh, some more patterns. Now, this is a cake um, tool. They make patterns in that fondant frosting. And let's, oh, we got to get another piece of paper. A whole bunch of little papers we can use. All right. And see, you're going to get to see that pattern in there and the different colors. So that's fun. Okay. Now we need background. Overlapping squares. Okay, this should be fun. Let's uh, let's real quick do this. So you can clean your gel plates off by just pulling on them, and then you get cool backgrounds. Um, those ones I want to keep sort of nice. So let's do another. This is called second generation. When you pull the second time, if you hear anybody say second generation. It just means they pulled off the same uh, gel plate without re-inking it. There you go. I actually like that one better. So, a lot of times, I was going to say sometimes, a lot of times I like the second pull better. All right. So this time we're doing overlapping squares. Okay. So this time we're going to do two different ones. We're going to do green over here. And we're going to do blue over here because I need these for my um, my project. All right. So let's do this because if it made a weird color, it would make more like purple, right? Use our color theory. And we just want to get this all over here. And then on this one, let's get this green rolled out. And having a super soft, uh, having a, this is a um, speedball. It's a super soft brayer. I feel like does help a tiny bit um, as opposed to having a harder, stiffer brayer. I think it just helps the uh, paint spread more nicely on the gel plate. And it's worth taking the time to get this nice and spread out the way you want it. Just takes a second. All right, let's use, I'm gonna use the same one on the blue. This little tiny pattern. I haven't never used this one. And on the green. And now, we're going to do this. And here's where our acrylic block comes in handy. So we're going to overlap these. Move that up a little bit so you can see it. So now, I can see where I'm putting this as opposed to So you can make kind of a two-tone one. I love that. This is this is kind of my more my gig. Okay, so now we're going to use stencils. And you can use stencils a couple different ways. I'm going to keep going with this green and blue. Maybe we'll do, yeah, let's keep going with green and blue for a wee minute here because I need those. 
And we'll make some orange and other blue though too. Okay, so let's do a green. So if you put the paint on first and then you put the stencils, let's do circles because I love circles. Okay, so a couple things you can do. Number one, you can put your old one on and get some circles. Look how cool that is. And then what will happen is when you make your next pullover here, okay, let's turn this over. Okay, you get patterns. And that's a pattern with just using the um, just using the stencil that way. Now here's another cool way you can use a stencil. Let's get some regular blue over here because I like Diane's colors. Her colors seem to go really well together. And they're kind of bright. They're brighter than lots of things I do. My husband got me these colors. He's a good egg. That's a good man who will buy you paint art supplies for your birthday. Oops. I wanted to do this the opposite way. Okay, so we'll do this anyways. I'll just use this as a palette. So this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our stencil down and we're gonna roll through it. And we have a little bit of that green in there. So this should be pretty. Okay, you're gonna roll through that And I'm using ready-made stencils. You could definitely use, just take a hole punch and punch a bunch of holes into a, into a piece of paper and use this as a stencil. All right, let's get a piece of paper. There you go. Some cool blue dots. Let's take this. We're gonna push this down. There you go. That's neato. Okay, so that is two ways to use a stencil, but I only counted it as one of our nines. Oh, here's a good one. So, this is fun. We're going to, since we already have this blue kind of started and maybe a little bit drier, we're going to roll out this blue. And the thinner you put it, the drier it will get faster because um, really having each, if you're going to make multiple layers, you want to have each layer dry. I'm not great at waiting, but it works best that way. All right, so now I am looking for, I've seen it before, so it's here, here we go. One of the cool things that you can do is you can make this, um, cause you think, oh, I should put some paint on there. And then you think I have to roll it the whole way, but you can just put paint in little different areas of your stencil. You don't have to put it all on. And I'm trying not to dab too hard because that bottom paint is probably a little wet. If we let it dry completely, you would see the true color of the green on top of it. Okay, there we go. So it's just on some places. Let's do it this way since we can. Cool. I just love the acrylic blocks for how you can get the right placement, and, and that is neat to me. I really like that. We're going to put this on top of here, too. Okay. 
that's how you can start to get some layering of your colors. Okay, and then this is our last one. This should be fun. All right, let's use, we're gonna use, I'm gonna use this paper, okay? So now, and I know this may seem obvious to you, but I didn't think about it. Um, squares are really diamonds turned on their edges, right? So this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna make diamonds out of them. I know, right? You're going, uh, duh. But for me, I was like, oh my gosh, squares are diamonds turned on their edges. Or diamonds are squares turned on their edges. Okay, so I wanna get the paint off of this one. So, yep, that one's blue. So let's do this. And we're gonna get some of those fun dots that are still stuck under there. And these are three by three, um, three by three squares, okay? So you could definitely find acrylic blocks that are three by three, or maybe three and a half by three and a half or four by four. Oh, we didn't get any of the blue, that's okay. All right, so let's do this one. And I want, oh, yay. I want a little bit of this in here. Okay. And then let's do this. Oh, we have one more. I think there's going to be a fun, last fun one. Okay. So this one, oh, I'll put this down. And you could make a Harlequin pattern with them by touching the corners of the squares, right? There you go. Those are cool. That could be a fun place to put a focal point. All right, we're gonna do one last one. So we need our gels back. I'm gonna put some paint on them. What color is this? Green, we did green. Okay, so let's do a little bit more green. So we got these two ready. Let's uh, let's do something a little fun here. Let's put these squares on here. We're using our makeup dobby thing. Just want to get a little bit of different color going in here. And I don't want it to be too thick. I want it to be pretty thin. All right. Now, we are gonna make a checkerboard, right? Because squares put together make a checkerboard. So this would make a really cool background. So we're gonna do this one here.
and then do it again here. And we're going to put this one here. And do it again here. And that way you could do this on a whole page and make a checkerboard background that would be really neat to use as a background image. So that is our nine ways and I will show you them all at the very end. Okay, in just that little bit of time, we made all these cool background images. And like I said, I'm gonna be using them the blue one, the blue ones and the green ones, especially on this background paper. But using that mini gel press is a super way to get lots of really cool texture and dimension in a really fast time. Hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.